Well, I have these two paintings and they're almost finished and so it was time for me to measure these two panels and then order my, my custom cradled panels to mount these on. And as I measured them, I found out that I didn't actually cut this down the middle. So they're actually off by quite a bit. So in other words, this one is like six inches wider than that one. And so big mistake. And I'm not real happy about it, but then I've been thinking uh, the height of them uh, is 50 inches tall, 50 inches tall, 50 inches tall. This one is 46.5 wide and this one is 52. 0.5 wide. So, you know, a couple things I could do. I could order panels that are, you know, to fit these two pieces of paper, but then one would be smaller than the other one, and I think it would look kind of weird. Um, but, you know, then I'm thinking, well, what if I did this, where I cut this panel, like right about maybe here. So I'd have one skinny panel here, and then I'd have a panel from here to there. And then on this one, I've got kind of skinny, wide, and then I might go even thinner on this one, like maybe a real thin panel here, and then let the fourth panel be the rest of the piece. So uh, this is what happens when you're, you know, you're kind of in the moment and you're not really being too careful where you cut your sheet of paper down in the middle. And as I, as I mentioned, this is Arches Oil paper. There were some other considerations too that I had to think about. First of all, mounting this large size of painting onto panel, it, it is more difficult than if you have a very small painting. And what I noticed is that along the bottom of these paintings, there's a bit of a ripple, like there's a ripple here. And then, you know, there's a ripple here. I actually noticed that even before I started painting. I mean, when, you're, when you have sheets of paper that have been rolled up, that's how they come from the factory. And you put them on the wall and then as you tape them, you notice that you really can't get like super flat paper against the wall. You're gonna have ripples. So I noticed that before I even started painting. And then when you start painting, of course, it just sometimes accentuates the amount of buckling or rippling or warping that the paper, you know, paper has. Now it's not too bad on these, but one thing that happens by cutting these into smaller pieces and then mounting them on like smaller panels, the likelihood of there being a, um, a problem with say an air pocket or something where the paper's not lying flat against the panel are decreased. And so, yeah, I just have to, you know, art to me is totally problem solving. I think that's the one recurring theme that I keep feeling is that at first when I measured these, it was like, oh no, crap. But, you know, there is a solution to every problem. And the problem for me is just, maybe this is actually a good thing. Maybe instead of like a diptych, it becomes, you know, four panels, all different sizes. And I kind of was trying to envision how that might look uh, on a wall. And I think I might like that. I feel like, yeah, four different size panels, that could actually be an interesting way to uh, cut these pieces of paper the only thing that I would be a little bit concerned about is that whenever you do that, whenever you cut a painting, like I would have to physically cut this sheet of paper here, I'd have to physically cut the sheet of paper, you know, wherever, here, whatever coincides with the, the boards that I end up ordering. And when it comes time to mount the pieces of paper onto the panel, what's really critical is that if I cut it here, then this portion and this portion have to match because they're going to be slicing through things like line, shape, you know, things like this. And if they don't match up, it's going to look really weird. So given that when you put the glue on the back side of the paper, not on the paper, but on the, on the board, um, there can be some expansion. And if you actually only put the glue on the board, your paper won't expand. My only reason of thinking of this time putting glue, the Lineco pH neutral adhesive on the back side of the painting was because I actually did want it to expand a little bit because what that does is it gets rid of any rippling. Uh, this is what I used to do when I was a watercolorist and I had, you know, finished a painting, but then it, it was all ripply, which is what happens to Arches watercolor paper. Well, in a way, this is kind of similar. I spoke with David Gamblin 
Yesterday, and I said to him, well, what would happen if you had an oil and cold wax painting on Arch's oil paper, and you wetted the back, and you let it expand, so the, the paper fibers expand, and then while they're doing that, they lie, they're getting flatter, right? And then, then I, could, uh, I could sandwich that between weights, put the wet side down on absorbent paper, it's kind of a process, and then weight it down until it dries, and then when you remove the weights, it's really flat. And he thought, yes, that could work if the painting were really dry. And however, if I cut these into smaller pieces, I'm not really sure that's gonna be necessary because the amount of warping and everything like that is now minimized by the fact that I've cut a 48 by 48 inch piece of paper down into say two feet by 50 inches. And uh, so anyways, those are things that you know happen in the studio. I didn't measure correctly. I just started painting. I, did, I was kind of sloppy with my measuring, yes. But it's okay, I mean, you know, if that happens, there are any number of options you can do to get yourself out of that. Complete with, I could actually cut this one down to match this one, but I see them as a diptych. And even if they were to kind of, you know, be really apart in a gallery or in an exhibition that I'm working toward, I, I still feel like I want them to be, you know, uh, together because that's how they were created and I feel like they kind of go together. So just wanted to share with you that's what's going through my head right now, trying to solve a problem as anyone who's an artist has multiple problems at any time of the day and you're always like, well, now what do I do? You know, um, you can get frustrated, but you can also say there's definitely a solution. I just had to figure out what it is. And I kind of love that part because at first it's like, oh no, and then you're like, oh yeah, maybe that was a happy accident. I, I have to say, I, I've had more happy accidents from making mistakes like this that lead to things that I never would have done if I didn't make that mistake. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you. So while I was thinking about how to divide these two larger paintings into four, as I mentioned, I wanted them all to be unequal in width. And so I did kind of look at the painting and looked where the marks were and you know where was it logical for me to cut through these paintings. And this is kind of what I decided on and I used freezer paper as my templates. All right, hi everybody. I'm in my studio and I've been waiting for these panels to arrive that were custom made for this very large painting that I have done. And half of the painting is right here. And in a previous section of this video series, I explained how I mismarked them and they were not cut down the middle. So, you know, there are a couple of different solutions I could have used, but what I decided to do was take these two large 48 by 48 inch paintings and cut them unevenly into four different sections. For that reason, I needed to have custom panels made. So I have them, they've arrived and they're behind me now. These are them and these are cradled panels. I wanted to show you the back side of them because it's kind of nice to know how each one is made. Uh, they usually have corner braces and the bigger the panel, the more of these cross braces you're gonna have. That's obviously for stability and to prevent warping. So these are very well made and it took me about two weeks to get these. They're pretty reasonably priced and I order these from the local university bookstore. Other times I've ordered them from cabinet makers. There's a local one in my town. So if you ever need to have a custom made cradle panel, check in with a cabinet maker, wood maker, a furniture maker, because sometimes they can make them for you. So notice how these are all different sizes here. And they all correspond with how I'm gonna cut these paintings. So it's a little tricky. Yes, I have to cut into the paintings and then I have to mount them onto these boards. So notice how I've got uh, two tables that are next to each other and I've got 
a cutting mat underneath and a very sharp blade and I've talked about this before uh, when cutting through any kind of artwork you know you, you want to make sure your blade is nice and fresh and I've got a straight edge there um, I guess uh, you know go slowly and it's better to score against the blade meaning that you're going to kind of lightly go several times rather than going just like trying to put maximum pressure and get through the whole thing at one time by scoring you know if you happen to like slip a little bit or whatever you have a chance of uh, making that cut the right cut so just kind of slow down So here's the final uh, piece uh, that is now in four panels and I just wanted to show you these close-ups. One of the nice things about doing it this way is that um, I'm showing you some different ways of displaying, you know, so if this were purchased and a person hangs it in their house, you know, they have many different ways and orientations that they can um, hang a piece like this, uh, complete with turning some panels, you know, 180 degrees, or you know, only hanging two panels here and two panels there, or one panel and three panels. Um, there are all these different ways of doing it, and, and I, you know, it, it's true that the marks don't necessarily line up, but that's actually okay. Um, I, when I tried this and the marks didn't line up, it was like, you know, it didn't really matter that much. I think it's because it's a very kind of a chaotic piece and it's uh, a lot of energy and that kind of thing. And depending on how far away you hang each of these panels from. Uh, one another that can make a big difference. So Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I, I just wanted to show you that um, Yeah, there was some problem-solving that was required here when you uh, when you mismeasure a piece So from this point forward, I think I'll be a little bit more careful cutting my either mixed-media paper or my arches paper or whatever it is that requires cutting and um, Yeah, so I just just wanted to share that with you. So hopefully you don't make the same mistake that I did Happy painting, everybody. Bye now.